tonight i like to speak on uh, the jnanic factors themselves jnanas are achieved or attained by the process of elimination and cultivation we eliminate hindrances and cultivate factors called jnanic factors jnanas jnanic factors elimination of hindrances is not uh, something permanent it is a temporary suspension or suppressing for the purpose of gaining concentration now we have uh, five jnanic factors which are called in english initial application of thought sustained application of thought joy happiness and concentration i i don't know the reason why the first uh, factor is called initial application of thought because uh, in a pali wo- pa- pali word doesn't uh, indicate anything uh, to me initial pali word is vitakka vitakka means thinking <coughs> in pali the word we use takketi uh, vitakketi as the verb uh, thinking and uh, uh, deliberating in that sense the word thak is used thak also is used for logical thinking the special um, branch of philosophy as we all know is called logic for logic in pali and sanskrit the word used is thak or tark in sanskrit thak is pali means logical thinking some people translate translate this word into english as uh, uh, discursive thinking even that doesn't seem to justify the pali word thak vitak vitak simply means uh, thought thinking process and thinking of uh, two types wholesome thinking and unwholesome thinking in uh, pali uh, there is another term for the same thing that is uh, sankap thinking in the noble eightfold path we find that word sankap samma sankap wholesome thinking wholesome thought and this wholesome thought also are called in pali uh, either samma sankap or samma vitak as opposed to wrong thinking mitcha sankap o mitcha vitak so 
this is, I, I wanted to mention this uh, in order to uh, point out the reason why I said uh, it's very difficult to understand why it is called initial thought or, and uh, sustained thought. It is just thought. If you say right thought or skillful thought, that is uh, Samma Vitaka, unskillful thought or uh, wrong thought is Mitta Vitaka. Anyway, in the um, Jhana formula, it's invariably mentioned everywhere Vitaka, Vitaka Vichara. What is wholesome thought? Wholesome vitakka. Uh, there are three, as I mentioned this morning. They are the thought of renunciation, nekkamma vitakka, or nekkamma sankappa, avyapada vitakka, or avyapada sankappa, and uh, avihingsa vitakka or avihingsa sankappa. These are wholesome thoughts. Based on wholesome roots, since they are based on wholesome roots, they are called wholesome thoughts. Thought of renunciation is called nekkamma. Uh, nekkamma means Renunciation. When you hear the word renunciation, you might uh, uh, think that simply means we have to renounce the world, renounce our household life, renounce uh, our properties, <laughs> our bank accounts, our husbands, wives, families. And this kind of thought, th th that also is, uh, uh, is true. But uh, uh, renunciation has even more practical, other is, other is not un impractical, it is also practical, but more uh, simple uh, meaning, uh, very general meaning. Uh, of renunciation, and even deeper meaning. That is, uh, anything, letting go, letting go of anything is called renunciation. We can let go of, uh, of greed for a piece of chocolate. That is renunciation. We can let go of uh, uh, additional pair of shoes when we have decided to buy that, we can let go of that. That also is renunciation. So renunciation means the minutest thing to the lar largest thing that we give up is called renunciation. Renunciation in the more deep sense means the thought, thought of letting go of things. This happens as I mentioned yesterday, particularly in the meditation, this becomes extremely practical and useful, meaningful. When we try to gain concentration, greed can arise. At that moment, even temporarily, we can let go of that greed. Decide to see something, hear something, smell something, taste something, touch something and even to think something, or decide to experience certain pleasant sensation, pleasant feeling, decide to have a, a, a pleasant uh, a thought. Whatever desire it may be, whether it is uh, for the sensual pleasure or the thought, uh, we let go of that. That letting go of anything, any thought, is renunciation. And that actually is what is meant by this term in 
in during meditation. So this is one aspect of uh, initial thought. Out of I I still continue to use the word initial thought, uh, although I have difficulty in uh, uh, understanding it, understanding why they use it. But still, since people are so accustomed to this term, all of a sudden I cannot coin new word until we find a better word or more meaningful, more comprehensive word. Uh, we continue to use this. Uh, this this one thought of renunciation, thought of uh, initial thought. Thought of generosity. And thought of generosity is based on the root of what is called non-greed. Non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion are three wholesome roots. Putting them more positively, non-greed is thought of generosity. Non-hatred is thought of friendliness. Non-cruelty is thought of compassion. So, uh, second initial thought is the thought of loving friendliness. It is called avyapa the sankapa or avyapa the vitakka. Thought of not hating. And that also is very important, especially in the practice of meditation. And when we, when we try to gain uh, concentration, this becomes uh, a stumbling block, hatred, anger. I think uh, some people have anger towards themselves. They hate themselves. I have often heard people say, I cannot love myself. I can love everybody else, but I cannot love myself. This is completely contradictory statement. How can you love anybody else on earth if you don't love yourself? It's not going to work. Perhaps the person might be thinking uh, of uh, greed, attachment, lust, but not loving friendliness. Loving friendliness is something uh, more altruistic than uh, lust or attachment. So one has to have that for oneself. Loving, friendly thought. We, that's why we repeatedly recite the words of uh, friendliness. We have to cultivate it within ourselves. And as I said, it has a, a soothing, comforting, relaxing effect on our body and mind. The third is um, uh, thought of compassion. Avi hinsa sankap or avi hinsa vitakka. Hinsa means hurting, harming. Avi hinsa means not hurting, not harming. Thought of not harming. It's different from uh, thought of hatred. <coughs> thought of hatred is more mental. Thought of harming is uh, more physical. We want to harm somebody, hurt somebody, expressing, saying something to hurt, insulting words, uh, some derogatory remarks uh, we want to express. Uh, of course, even that has the, the, the same common root as uh, hatred, same root. There is no root uh, uh, for, separate root for uh, cruelty. There's no root of cruelty. There's a root of hatred, root of anger. So, thought of cruelty arises from the root of anger. 
Now these three unwholesome roots uh, always damaging, therefore we had to cultivate these wholesome thoughts to uh, make our mind calm and peaceful. Therefore, initial thought is the thought of friendliness, thought of compassion, and thought of renunciation, generosity. Generosity, friendliness, and compassion are the initial thought. Now, at the very beginning of tranquility meditation, we cultivate these three thoughts. At the very beginning of Vipassana meditation, we cultivate these three thoughts. And therefore, cultivation of these three thoughts are uh, very necessary for both tranquility meditation and insight meditation. So when we have uh, initial application of thought and sustain initial application of thought, that thought we sustain, we maintain, we nourish these thoughts. When we have uh, the uh, the sleepiness and drowsiness. When we have initial and initial application of thought, sustained application of thought, sleepiness and drowsiness fades away. Initial application of thought and sustained application of thought are sustained, supported, nourished by mindful reflection. Initial thought and sustained thought be nourished with mindful reflection. Uh, please remember this, this is very important in the practice, even in the practice of jhana. To have mindfulness, to nourish these roots. When we have unmindful reflection, we suffocate these three thoughts. Initial thought and sustained thought, we suffocate. We starve them to death. We strangle them when we have uh, unmindful reflection. When we have unmindful reflection, we nourish the root of sleepiness, drowsiness, that comes from delusion, moha. We nourish the root of moha with unmindful reflection. When you have mindful reflection, we suffocate this unwholesome root. Starve it to death. So we got to have a mindful reflection to overcome sleepiness and drowsiness by cultivating initial application of thought and sustained application of thought. So the mindfulness starts even from the very beginning of tranquility meditation. It comes to blossom at certain level, I tell you where it comes to blossom. So, uh, we begin with this, and then when uh, initial application of thought, sustained application of thought are nourished by mindful reflection and suffocate or or oh, starve uh, sleepiness and drowsiness to death, we have eliminated one unwholesome factor and cultivated wholesome factor. What, is we are, what we have eliminated? We eliminated sleepiness and drowsiness. As I said, this is a process of elimination and cultivation. We eliminated one and cultivated the other. To eliminate one, we have to have mindful, mindful reflection. And to uh, cultivate, we have to have a mindful reflection. If we, if we cultivate, if we become unmindful, that which is supposed to be eliminated will be nourished, sustained. That which is to be cultivated 
if we become unmindful of it, we will kill that. So it is a very delicate balance. Then, uh, what happens when we have initial application of thought and sustained application of thought, that is the moment we begin to have some confidence in our practice. Why? We can see the, the way how it operates. When initial thought arises, sleepiness and drowsiness fade away, then we begin to see, ah, the system works, the method works. My effort begins to bear fruit. And I can do that. It is not just a mere theory. I can do it. So from that arises confidence. When confidence arises, <coughs> doubt fades away. We have overcome these hindrances earlier, but it is just a suppression, not eliminating. Therefore, still they are there. But when the jhanic uh, factors are developed, at that time they will be suppressed. This is called Tadanga Pahana in Pali. Tadanga Pahana means one to one suppression. When we cultivate one, the other is suppressed. It is still temporary, but it is more effective and more durable. When sustained application thought becomes stronger and uh, uh, confidence arises, doubt fades away. Now, why do we need sustained application of thought at that time in jhana? Now, how we do, how we sustain it? As I said at the beginning, we start practicing loving uh, our jhana meditation with the loving friendliness thought. And loving friendliness thought begin to take root. That is what sustained application of thought does. When the loving friendliness, compassion, and uh, uh, generosity begin to take root and make the practice steady. And that is the moment sustained application of thought becomes strong. And that is the moment we will have more confidence and our doubt fades away. Now we have gone two steps. Both steps are uh, on the one hand positive cultivating, uh, two steps we cultivate and two steps we eliminated. I mean two factors eliminated, two factors cultivated. The factors we cultivate are in the application of thought and sustained application of thought and confidence and uh, factors we eliminated are sleepiness and drowsiness and doubt. And that, in fact, gives us even a greater boost, spiritual boost, for the practice. We begin to feel more uh, courageous. And uh, that is the moment we will have uh, real joy. Joy begin to develop. Because we have seen the results. It is said, <coughs> uh, as you experience, you begin to see the, with, along with the uh, sustained application of thought and confidence, you begin to feel a tiny little growth or development of uh, rapture. 
joy. It arises, it is just like initiating itself. It itself begins to grow, cultivate. And at, when that arises, our resentment, anger, fades away. Anger will be suppressed. Uh, rapture and anger also cannot stay together. Uh, so rapture slow, anger slowly fades away. Because when we are joyful, and actually we have all the um, laid the foundation of loving friendliness, compassion, generosity, with this foundation, when we proceed, we have confidence and joy arises. So joy has three supporting factors. That is, joy, that is uh, the friendliness, compassion, and generosity. And there is no room for, ga for hatred, for anger, at that time. To cultivate jhanas uh, uh, with anger is not possible. In some tradition, some people, maybe it is more mythological, that um, they attain jhana and they use the jhana to hurt others, to use their psychic power to destroy situations people, places. Uh, so they sort of do a lot of destructive things. But not in according to the Buddhist, uh, according to Buddhist type of jhana. Buddhist type of jhana is always wholesome, always peaceful. Because of these wholesome factors, from the very beginning we cultivate wholesome factors. And therefore, there is no room in that mind to develop hurting thoughts, unwholesome thoughts. And when uh, joy arises, uh, anger fades away, therefore there is no room for cultivating hatred. And then, when joy arises, joy or rapture, sometimes it is translated as rapture, sometimes it is joy, and this is somewhat uh, confusing, but I like to stay with, with the word joy for uh, pity. When uh, that happens, anger fades away, then the mind is mind filled with joy, will have happiness. Happiness is uh, uh, so strong, so calming, so soothing, comforting, peace-generating state of mind that uh, all uh, restlessness and worry fades away when happiness arises. Now I want to make the uh, I want to show the distinction between joy and happiness, and also uh, joy and happiness is incorrectly used in conversations. When people are excited, they say they are happy, but it is completely diametrically opposite of happiness. Excitement is not happiness. When happiness arises, excitement fades away. With the excitement, we cannot gain jhana. Uh, you may be excited about your new appointment. Excitement about uh, your expected uh, friend. 
uh, something that uh, you are materially going to gain. Uh, when you are thinking about it, you will be nervous and excited and waiting for that. Or when you get something materially, you become excited. And you may express this excitement by uh, smiling, by laughing, by singing, by kissing, by hugging, uh, by dancing and, uh, you know, expressing something physical. That kind of physical expression uh, will no longer be there when we are really happy. When we are happy, uh, we are content, uh, fulfilled, uh, we have accomplished, we wanted to get what we got what we wanted, not material, but spiritually. Not for the body, but for the mind. So, uh, happiness is just the opposite of excitement. Joy is the opposite of resentment. Now, the difference between joy and happiness also is important to remember. Uh, we use very uh, uh, popular simile to illustrate the difference between these two. If you remember the simile, you can remember the difference between <coughs> joy and happiness. Uh, my favorite simile is uh, uh, a man uh, traveling in a desert. When he travels in a desert where there is no water, no food, no trees, no roads, mm, no one to talk about, and you are thirsty, hungry, tired, full of worries, and dry. Uh, and at that time, you meet somebody coming towards you with uh, wet hair, wet cloth, fresh face, smiling face, with vigor, with great enthusiasm, he's you know, walking towards you. From a distance, when you see the person coming towards you, your joy begins to arise. You begin to have some hopes. You begin to feel that you are not desperate. Something uh, uh, positive is happening. This is how joy, big joy grows slowly by degrees. As the person is approaching you, your joy of seeing this person's freshness, um, uh, wetness, uh, your joy increases. When the person comes close to you, you are full of joy. Then you will ask the person, how come that he looks fresh, he looks energetic, his clothes are wet, face is wet, hair is wet. Then he would say, I happen to see a little oasis in the desert. Hearing that word, your joy even increases even more. Then uh, you, that person would pass you and you walk towards the lake, the oasis. And again, your joy continues to increase as you approach. When you see the oasis from a distance, you will have more joy. And as you get close to it, you will be more joyful. And this is how the joy continuously increases slowly and gradually at every moment, every new hope that arises, your joy will increase. And then, when you see the oasis, you are so desperately looking forward to a place like this, you jump into it with your clothes, 
and swim in it, drink water, eat lotus roots, lotus buds, and swim as long as you like, and then come out of the water and relax your hands and legs, stretching hands and legs, you say, ah, what a relief. That is happiness. Happiness arises, happiness is contentment, fulfillment, accomplishment. So, the weariness is gone, worry is gone, uh, hopelessness is gone, you are fully content. Happiness is, at that time you don't jump up and down. Because you are, you have swam, you have drank water and so forth, you just want to enjoy this joy, bliss of contentment by relaxing, having even a nap on the bank of this beach, of this lake. That kind of calming, soothing, comforting, composing feeling you will have when you have happiness. And that, what that does, it would put off all your worries, all your fears. And moreover, that would lead to concentration. Just like when you go to, when you have a nap on the bank of that oasis, you gain concentration. Now, uh, there is some uh, English translation of jhana. Uh, in that translation, in the ancient English, you know, when, they, when these Pali terms tra originally translated for the first time into English, uh, these are not, um, they're not trying to express something spiritual, they don't know what it is so alien to these people who translated that. Therefore, they uh, translated as uh, uh, trance. Trance. As I understand the word trance is something that uh, activates yourself. I mean, move, lo make a lot of physical movement when you are in trance. Right? Not you are calm and peaceful. It is because of not understanding these terms well, they use these terms. That is why it, it is at that time they used this word initial application of thought, sustained application of thought. Even up to this date, we use these two terms without thinking very much. But what it happened, what really happens in the, the process of development of jhana, is these thoughts, these thoughts of generosity, the thought of friendliness, thought of compassion, takes root, takes root, makes the mind very strong, very healthy, very peaceful. Perhaps for that they might, for that reason they might use the word initial application thought and they don't know, they don't say what it initiates, what these thoughts initiate. These thoughts initiate the, pra the beginning of the practice, or uh, the gaining jhana. Anyway, when these five factors, initial, so-called initial application of thought, sustained application of thought, joy, happiness and concentration are together as a unit, as a team, in one package, you are in the first jhana. I forgot to mention what uh, concentration does. That's also very important to remember. When we gain concentration, our greed fades away. You know, it's, it is uh, somewhat uh, 
uh, it can be somewhat confusing for some people. Uh, when we say concentration uh, overcomes greed, because uh, the nature of greed is to cling to something. And somebody might think even concentration is <coughs> something like gluing to something, focusing some on something, staying on something, concentrate. So these two seem to have uh, similar characteristics for some people. Actually speaking, when we look at these two factors more closely, uh, with uh, more keen awareness, we can see these two are completely two different mental states. Greed, when greed arises, the Buddha used the word, used very beautiful term. I always go to Pali terms to define something, because the Pali terms give such a precise clear meaning. Pali word is pono bhavika, nandiraga sahagata, tatra tatra bi nandini. This is how greed is defined in Pali words. Pono, the greed's nature, greed's function is to become again and again, pono bhavika. Nandi raga sahagata, nandi means uh, uh, Delight, raga means attachment. Delight and attachment go together. And moreover, tatra, tatra binandini, the, the nature of greed is it likes things here now and like things there then. That means it jumps from object to object. It likes here a little bit and enjoy it and then something else is better, it goes there. And then see something else, even still better, goes there. It jumps from object to object. That is the nature of greed, clinging, craving. It glues to something, you cannot take it out. This gluing nature uh, is there and that is damaging. Psychologically, it is destructive. It is uh, counterproductive. As far as spiritual growth is concerned, counterproductive. Concentration is not like that. Concentration just without, for concentration we have to have various other beautiful mental factors. We have to have attention, When we have greed, we don't pay much attention, we just grab it, just cling to it. When we have concentration, we have an attention. Moreover, with this jhani concentration, wholesome concentration particularly, has a very special function. That function is to see things as they really are. When we are greedy, we don't see things as they really are. The simile used to illustrate greed is colored water. One simile I mentioned yesterday, that is uh, like uh, borrowed property. You have obligation. Other simile is more vivid. That simile is uh, colored water. When the water is colored, I go, our eyes go to, the, go to various colors. We cannot see the clear the clarity through water. Eyes would not penetrate, transcend the water. When water normally undisturbed uh, unmixed with any color, is uh, transcending. 
it has transcendental factor. We can see through water. If it is undisturbed, uncolored, pure, simple, we can see through. But when it is full of colors, mud, and disturbed, disturbed, we cannot, we cannot see through. When the mind is filled with greed, clinging, craving, attachment, we don't know what we do. We always grab some. How many times you got deluded by your greed? It appears to be very pleasant, beautiful, attractive, tempting. But you got hold of, hold of it or hold of that being or person, boy, you begin to see the reality. And that you do not see at the beginning. Because the mind is cluttered with greed. But when we have, ins when we have concentration, concentration does not do that. Concentration always uh, enables the mind to penetrate the reality, the truth, if it is true concentration. Of course, the first jhanic concentration, <coughs> even the first jhanic concentration is powerful, not of course as powerful as high jhana. Now, what happened in the first, when we attain the first jhana, this is, uh, this attainment is called first jhana, jhanic attainment. You have initial application of thought, sustained application of thought, joy, happiness and concentration, five factors and five hindrances. We eliminated five hindrances, cultivated five factors, and when these two are in a, like a balance, like a scale, you know, you are, we are, you are balancing them in a very, with a very flimsy thread, <laughs> because any time it may tilt one side to the to one side or the other, and therefore the attainment of the first jhana is a wonderful attainment, marvelous and most remarkable attainment compared to ordinary state. Unfortunately, that has its uh, flip side, its uh, downside. It always has to, has to maintain with a tremendous uh, uh, awareness, tremendous effort, because you tend to lose it. You lose it because the hindrances are not completely destroyed. They are temporarily suppressed. As long as the jhani factors, factors remain strong, hindrances, are, hindrances become inactive. And therefore, they can t continue to haunt the mind. However, you can strengthen the first jhana by attaining, by reflecting upon it, uh, by determining to attain it, determining to come out of it, and determining, uh, reflecting on each factor advantage of each factor and disadvantage of each factor. We got to reflect. When we keep reflecting and attaining them again and again and again, then the first jhana become more durable, more strong. It is not advisable for someone to jump into the second jhana, second level. Buddha gave very vivid uh, simile to illustrate the mind that wants to jump to the next 
level. He said it's like a, a, a cow coming into a, a you know grassland in spring. In spring, you know, grass is grown everywhere. So she would uh, nibble here a little bit, and then oh, raise the head and look over and see more grass greener there. I mean, greener over the grass over there is greener. So she will jump there, and nibble a little bit there, and then look over this side. Then she sees grass there is even greener than here. So she would go and nibble there. So she would go nibbling here and there uh, uh, all day long, and finally she would get lost. She would not know where she came from, how to return, and she would get lost. Similarly, when one attains the first level, one has to be very patient. To st most people don't have enough patience. That's why even they lose even the first jhana. Even attaining the first jhana becomes very difficult because of impatience. When they get a little bit of uh, joy, they get uh, excited because the mind is not trained to be patient. And therefore, uh, although patient is not uh, uh, mentioned as one jhanic factor, we would like to add that also as an <laughs> important factor. Have patience. Have patience to master the first jhana, to stay with it. Until you are fully confident, you know what happened? This is very, uh, this, this is the beauty of this attainment. When you keep repeating it over and over, many, 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 many times, the mind becomes conditioned, uh, it becomes strong and mature and ready to go to the next level. When the mind is ready to go to the next level, you don't have to wish. You don't have to make any special effort. When the mind is ready, the mind naturally glides into the next level. I like to speak more about the way how we glide, slide into the next level tomorrow. Now, we until tomorrow, stay on the first level. <laughs> Keep trying, practicing it over and over again. When we come to tomorrow, perhaps we can learn how to glide into that. I think this is enough for tonight Dharma talk. And see you.